start with our uh, series that we have uh, finished with the syllabus of anthropology as an optional and uh, now we'll be discussing the previous year questions just for you to get a clarity about what kind of questions are asked what is the orientation what is the scope and what can you expect so now that uh, you have gone through the previous sessions on the syllabus just look at the next slide okay so this is the first three units that we discussed in our first session the first was on the meaning scope and development of anthropology okay the next one was the relationship of anthropology with different disciplines and the third one was the branches and i told you this earlier also that these three sub these three topics are interrelated to each other now look at the questions the first question i mean uh, in 2017 they asked this question, UPSC asked this question about defining anthropology and describing the major branches of anthropology along with elaborating any one of them. So this question is very direct, define, so the meaning of anthropology, again, the branch, they are asking the branches, which are the branches, these are the branches and elaborate any one of them. So you can use information from all three of these uh, topics. Similarly, in 2014, they asked, uh, another sim similar question, see uh, why I am saying similar is that when you define anthropology, right, when you uh, study the meaning, scope and development of anthropology, you will obviously come across many uh, examples and the relevance of anthropology in contemporary world and when we talk about contemporary India, the, the, the syllabus that we discussed in paper 2, that is also directly related. So, this question can be related to many different topics. These three topics, even the uh, many topics in paper 2 and from current affairs also. So, this is a general, common and uh, overlapping question from many parts of the syllabus. Again, you come across the relevance. So, the definition and the relevance and the role these are all kind of uh, synonyms for each other. The major subdivisions, so subdivisions are the branches, the major branches, what are the branches? So you can, you will write the major branches and then you will uh, just give one or two examples of each of them, the relevance of each of them, probably uh, what is the role in contemporary India. So, you know, this question. So this is also related. Next one, the situation of anthropology in social sciences. Here we have the relationship, so this is what it is asking, where do you situate or how do you situate anthropology? So its relationship with social science, different social sciences, history, economy, polity, okay, all of these things. In 2018, it said uh, the question was given account on the field method used in the study of archaeological anthropology. So archaeological anthropology is a branch, right? And the field methods that are used, so when you go through archaeological anthropology, you will study about what are the different tools that are employed by archaeologists and anthropologists. Uh, let's say, for example, if you look at the dating methods, they are also one of the methods. They are not a field method, but they are also one of the methods. So there are directly related parts also. And when you go through these topics, you will come across obviously the field method what when you study archaeological anthropology you will see okay what are the methods that are used to uh, dig out an, uh, a fossil to uh, excavate rightly excavate what kind of fossil has to be excavated in what way so that is what this question is then uh, this question the difference between social anthropology and sociology this is a very common topic because when you uh, read about in these three units you would find this topic very directly mentioned the relationship between social anthropology and sociology then in archaeological anthropology it, it was asked here also it was asked here also then there was major subdivisions also then there were major branches also so you see that how the questions are being repeated in 2015 it asked this question again 1992 also this asked linguistic anthropology again one of the branches of anthropology social cultural again a branch so you get a fair idea what it is asking and there is major repetition of question because there is an overlap here next let's come to the next uh, uh, subdivision next topic human evolution 
so if you remember we uh, talked about this what are the bio biological factors cultural factors in evolution you study these and then the theories darwinian theory pre darwinian post darwinian lamarckism synthetic theory dawes scopes and gauss's rules all of these things let's see the question let's let's see the question implications of mutation so this is a direct question which is related to even the theories also and the biological cultural factors also this is a mix of everything so you can use all your information and it is a direct question also that what was the implication of this mutation what led i mean what led to the mutation also and what did mutation do both biologically and culturally so you can cite uh, an example of a theory also and then you can cite the biological cultural factors at the implications of those mutations at the term mutation everything is included in this next was in 2018 there is the biological changes that made man capable of making cultures so this is nothing but what were the biological changes that happened the biological evolution this is what this question is biological changes so uh, you know bipedal bipedalism erect posture uh, changes in the skull everything that is a biological change and this led to the making of culture the next is on darwin's theory it directly says that critically examined the darwin's theory of evolution so you have to you if you know what darwin's theory is and you know what the shortcomings are you will do a critical analysis of it directly mentioned direct question biological evolution this is uh, in 1997 they asked a question biological evolution of early man right next one is how darwinism differs from synthetic theory so this is again a direct question when you read about darwin and post darwin uh, this is directly uh, mentioned that why did a synthetic theory come what was the difference okay it was the next step to darwinism again there is a question of synthetic theory so you see the point is not to just go through all of the 1992 1991 all of these question but you understand the pattern okay it will ask about biological evolution cultural evolution what led to these evolutions what are mutations these are all key terms when you read these these units you these are key terms darwinian th darwinian theory or post darwinian theory okay next we'll come to unit 1.5 this is on characteristics of the primate if you remember we talked about the taxonomy or the adaptations you know uh, fossil primate living major primates all of those things adaptive primate radiation so when you uh, when you'll be covering the whole syllabus you'll be coming across this term okay next is discuss the evolutionary sig significance of bipedalism and erect posture so this question can be linked to this part also can be linked to this part also biological cultural factors in human evolution this is a very important topics okay evolutionary significance of bipedalism what did it do it led to cultural uh, led to cultures being developed and what all it did biologically as well okay so direct question and this will repeat also you'll see next the comparative anatomy between man and ape this is a very common question why because this is a direct chapter given in the uh, in the material and their evolutionary significance so the, you you'll be drawing uh, some figure of the skull of the uh, you know of the hand uh, the feet uh, the jaws the teeth all of those things they, these are all comparative anatomy their evolutionary significance why did uh, one evolutionary uh, one evolution take it towards apes and why did the other one t t uh, take it towards development of human beings okay so their evolutionary significance then there was skeletal change due to erect posture and implications so this question and this question again there are very they are same the skeletal changes it shows biological so bipedalism and erect posture are skeletal changes and what are their implications see again in 2016 they asked 2019 they asked 2014 again this is the skeletal difference between human, human and chimps so in 2017 they asked about the an, uh, anatomical features between man and ape and has human and chimps so you see again in 1998 they asked the uh, the anatomical changes that occur in man due to erect posture right so are you able to understand how uh, repetitive these questions are and how interrelated they are okay let's move on to the next unit phylogenetic status we discussed about this also uh, you know the different uh, mm, uh, category australopithecus or paranthropus or javanicus neanderthals 
so uh, the question in 2019 i'm sorry i don't have the question in 2020 but in 2019 it says europeans are closer to neanderthals so discuss the view of the african origin of human kind so there are there are different researches also that are going on by different universities on neanderthals and their uh, you know relatedness to the europeans why because it was the neanderthal fossil was found in uh, europe so it was uh, analyzed that you know europeans are more closer to the to the neanderthal so the it is asking to critically discuss the uh, in view of african origin so you understand the question what is trying to say the african origin because the origin was there uh, in africa the first fossil was found in africa but it says that it, with view to neanderthals what is the critical part of african origin right the next one is this is 2019 then in 2018 it says the culture related to homo erectus very direct question because you'll be doing homo erectus here homo erectus here write a short notes on rhodesian man so rhodesian man is directly given here so in a short note you will mention okay the fossil for rhodesian man was found here this is the uh, the skull this is the size of the skull uh, you know you will draw an image of the skull uh, and different aspects to it the different anatomical uh, points that you study about it you just have to mention them there here with a obviously you'll have to draw a diagram with it the salient characteristics and geographical distribution of homo erectus so this is talking about the fossil the distribution where all the fossils were found so you will be writing about the uh, international uh, you know globally where are the fossils are found not all of them but you have to mention them you have to briefly draw a world map and you know mark on okay where in where in africa where it, uh, it was found the salient features of homo erectus so just like rhodesian man uh, homo erectus also has uh, the anatomical features so you'll mention all of those asian homo erectus right so homo erectus the javanicus is called homo uh, asian homo erectus so uh, or the pecanus is also so uh, asian homo erectus is again the uh, anatomical features of that you'll mention so you seeing that how direct they are asking how directly they are asking neanderthal man so they are directly asking about neanderthal man right uh, the major skeletal similarities and differences between homo erectus and homo sapiens so again the skeleton it says it, it clearly mentions the major skeletal similarities and differences so you will be reading about both of them you have to mention them maybe you know draw a diagram so you see how direct they are how repetitive they are again and i am using these words again and again because uh, you have to once you see this question you will find this key term again and again okay homo erectus you will find hair also homo erectus you will find hair also right next unit is on the principles of prehistoric archaeology so uh, we discussed these terms paleolithic mesolithic and all those terms right so uh, discuss with example megalithic culture in india so this is from paper 2 i guess that they have mentioned here but you know about megalithic uh, culture in india because you've done paper 2 old dubai gorge this is a site okay uh, the mesolithic culture and associated rock art with examples from india india is very important obviously uh, the dating methods so dating methods are directly mentioned here absolute and relative so it's asking relative ones okay the major traditions in upper paleolithic cultures in europe you see all of these years 2019 2019 all of these are 2019 okay town planning in harappan cultures this is a very important topic right direct direct very direct account of the consequences of food production in neolithic culture so neo what why did uh, you know the evolution of agriculture what uh, neolithic what agriculture did to the next chalcolithic copper bronze age what were the contributions of it in 2018 it was asked in 2017 again it asked the dating method one method of relative uh, and absolute in detail are you seeing i hope you are able to understand the questions right the next one is on nature of culture and society so i said that the both of these topics they go hand in hand so the next the question is that how indigenous people encounter globalization so this uh, if you have to see if they are asking this question in paper 1 you will be writing about from a global perspective but if they are asking about in paper 2 you will write it from an indian perspective indigenous people are the tribals then discuss social stratification 
uh, according to any three major approaches so this part will be discussed uh, you know studied in theories also process stratification from uh, global perspective also and from indian perspective also right the next one is on cultural relativism so cultural relativism here also cultural relativism is in theories also and the question comes here in 2016 895 89 is repeat 2019 also uh concept of cultural relativism again been so dear to anthropology so different ways to ask the same question it is different basically asking about cultural relativism only but its relevance are uh, you when you study cultural relativism you understand why it is so dear actually it is very dear to anthropology because the anthropology itself is based on cultural relativism uh distinguishing feeding feature between culture and civilization so you see how uh, direct it is culture civilization it is mentioned in the civil syllabus also and here also it says right next on marriage if you want to read, read all the questions just pause the video and do so right i am just moving ahead so that you to give a few of fair idea so we said about marriage also endogamy exogamy monogamy polygamy functions of marriage and all those things so ways of acquiring mate in tribal society this is a question particularly from paper 2 so in indian tribal society what are the different ways of acquiring or marriage you know pre marriage what are the different when you read this you will come across many unique patterns also then different forms of uh, preferential marriage with suitable examples what are the preferential marriages okay marriage uh, describe uh, the various types of marriage in human society are you seeing different types of marriage it says monogamy polygamy this is what is asking okay then this is a uh, you know kind of contemporary question where do you suggest live in relationship so you will use your current affairs also some kind of research that you've done uh, i mean you've read okay ways of acquiring spouse in simple society again the same question in 2018 also in 2012 also the taboo serve as a means of social control what kind of taboos you read about incest taboo and everything uh, that you do ahead also right so do you understand what the importance is right so over here we will just stop and uh, i urge you to read this and uh, we will come with the next topics in uh, the coming sessions also uh, do remember to like and subscribe thank you so much for your time